Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Today we're talking about the era de Brut equilibrium again, but now we're entering into an area of uncertainty. Timestamps are below if you'd like to jump around, but let's go ahead and get right into it. The setup for this era de Brut world with uncertainty is going to be the same as before. The only difference is going to be that these two people, our friends Bill and Dave, are going to only live one period. The good that we're talking about is still the coconut, and the trading mechanism is still the same as in those original era de Brut equilibrium videos. The main difference in this era de Brew world is that our endowments are going to be dependent on the weather. So we are in upstate New York. So there are two types of weather. It can be sunny or it can be snowy. Their coconut tree likes either the snowy weather or the warm weather. So for example, Bill's coconut tree only grows coconuts if it's sunny outside, where Dave's tree only grows coconuts if it's snowy outside. So there's a 50% chance of it being sunny or snowy today. So what you can see now is that Bill and Dave each have some uncertainty about what their endowment will be today, how many coconuts their tree is going to drop, and that amount is going to be based on the weather, but we should have two coconuts between the two of them in every period. In addition to the endowments not being equal or being weather dependent, all coconuts are not created equal. Now you might say, well, isn't a coconut just a coconut? And the answer is yes. It's easier if you think about a coconut in each type of weather as a different good. It just makes it easier to keep track of. So for example, I'm going to call a coconut that fell from Dave's tree when it was snowy. I'm going to call that a frozen coconut. It's called a frozen coconut because that is worthless if it's sunny outside. If I buy a frozen coconut and the weather turns out to be sunny, then that frozen coconut thaws and gets all nasty and I don't really want to eat it. I just throw it away. It's worthless to me. If I have a coconut that falls when it's sunny outside, I'm going to call that a dry coconut. That's going to be worthless in the snow because if it gets wet, in the snow and frozen. Again, it gets all nasty. I don't want it. I just throw it out. It's worthless to me. Bill has zero frozen coconuts and two dry coconuts if it's sunny. Dave has two frozen coconuts and he's pretty happy when it snows. He has zero dry coconuts if it's sunny, so he's pretty sad about that. So this is how I think of their endowment. Again, it just makes it easier to think about what's happening as we go through the problem. Now we've talked about consumption smoothing before and we've talked about consumption smoothing across time as my endowment goes up and down through different days. But that same concept of consumption smoothing is gonna hold here across states. Bill and Dave still don't like the risk. They still don't like thinking that well I could wake up tomorrow and it's snowy and I get two coconuts or I could wake up and it's sunny and I get zero coconuts and I'm sort of like can either eat a lot or eat nothing I really want to trade such that I can sort of smooth that consumption out over the different weather patterns so again we're in an era debris world so I can trade IOUs for coconuts in different states of nature as opposed to different time periods it's gonna work the same way again as in before I can't make empty promises I can't say oh yeah I'll definitely pay you that coconut tomorrow it's like, no, you got to pay me now, or you've got to trade me an IOU now. You can't just sort of say, ah, sure. And then it comes tomorrow. You don't have the coconut and you're stuck. Now let's start talking about the budget constraint for Bill. I'm using Bill again, just to focus on one person to make it a little easier. So we know that Bill gets zero coconuts if it's snowy and two coconuts if he's sunny and two coconuts if it's sunny, which means that his total wealth is zero times the price of a snowy coconut and two times the price of a dry or a sunny coconut which means that Bill's wealth is zero times the price for a frozen coconut or a coconut when it's snowy outside, plus two times the price of a dry coconut or a coconut that falls when it's sunny outside. Notice that there are no probabilities in this wealth, right? There is no such thing as like a probabilistic budget. You don't walk into a grocery store probably having zero dollars or probably having two dollars. You either have zero dollars or two dollars. So his expenditure is also not going to be probabilistic. So he's going to buy some snowy coconuts or some frozen coconuts. So we'll call that CTB of the state of nature being equal to snow. He's going to buy some dry coconuts or some coconuts where the state of the world is sunny. So his spending, he's going to buy both of them, right? Because Bill doesn't know if it's going to be sunny or snowy tomorrow. So he wants to guard against that risk. So it makes sense that he should buy some frozen and some dry coconuts. And the probabilities should factor into that decision. But in terms of his actual expenditure, there are no probabilities to be found anywhere in this budget constraint. So so what I've done here is I've just written out that budget constraint fully so that we can see it. Note that this line is his expenditure. This is how much he's going to spend. It's gonna be less than or equal to his wealth. Notice that Bill gets zero coconuts if it's snowy and two coconuts if it's sunny. So really we can just sort of 
take this whole thing out because the worth of his endowment is only worth something when it's sunny. Similar to previous videos, let's not solve this right now. Let's just think about what the competitive equilibrium or the one period error to brute equilibrium is in this situation. Well, it's an allocation just like before. We've got some coconuts for Bill of when it's sunny and some coconuts for Dave. When it's sunny, we have some coconuts for Bill when it's snowy, some coconuts for Dave when it's snowy. So the way I've condensed that notation is just say CB of S, CD of S for the state of the world going from one to two or from sun to snow. Given prices, we have different prices for different states of the world. So P of S for again, sunny and snowy. That allocation given those prices needs to solve Bill's and Dave's utility maximization problem. I've just written out that same maximization problem we're all familiar with. Again, using that notation. Again, using that sum notation where the state of the world ranges from sunny to snowy or from one to two. And it's got to satisfy market clearing. So if we drop two coconuts in any given state of the world, we have to eat both of those coconuts. So again, hopefully this makes a little bit of sense for uncertainty in terms of one period. In the next video, we'll talk about how to extend this to infinite periods with an era de brew equilibrium with the same two states of nature. But if this was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe and we will see you next time for another case of econ struggles.